Hi guys, my name is Gavin, and today we're going to be creating this cute little snake game where you move a snake around on the screen and you collect apples, and each time you collect an apple, you gain another segment on your snake. So let's begin. So to start with, we're going to need a few objects. So I'm just going to right click, go to object, and go OBJ player is the name of that one. Then we're going to right click object OBJ body. That's going to be our body part. Right click create object OBJ apple. And right click create object and OBJ spawner. And that's going to be for spawning our apples on the screen. Now I'm going to need to create a few sprites. We'll create one called SPR head. I'm going to edit that sprite. I'm going to make it green for now. And we'll just create a green circle for his head there. Nothing too special. And I'll create a couple of eyes on him like this. Pretty simple stuff. And actually just with him, I'm going to make sure that he's got a centered origin there. So we'll go create another one, SPR body. Again, it's the same sort of thing. We'll just create a body there. There we go. And again, it's just going to be centered. Make sure that's done because that's really important. Um, SPR apple. And we're going to edit that one, and I'm going to create another circle, and we'll just give them a little stem there. There we go. I'm not going to get too fancy with our sprites today. Um, if you want to spend some more time on them, feel free, but uh, we just want to get an example going. So with each of these, I just want to assign them to each of the different um, uh, objects. So now each one has its sprite. So now with our um, first player object, I'm going to add some code that I've written earlier. So what is this saying? Well, what we're doing is we're declaring a global variable called objects following, and that's going to be holding the information of each of our body parts. And we're going to store that information in our list, which is a what we call a DS list. So a DS list is a, is a fancy type of list that can hold all kinds of information. It can hold variables, but in this, in this, uh, instance, what it's going to hold is it's going to hold the IDs of each of our different body parts of our snake. So when we create a DS list, something that's really important to do is to uh, run a destroy event when our code is finished. And that's just going to clear our list out from memory. Otherwise, we could end up with all kinds of memory problems. So we run a destroy, we, we add a destroy event, and um, we just destroy that list. So that's just very important to do there. I'm also going to add a step event. And uh, we're going to add these lines of code in here. So this is um, telling our player, if you press the left key, right key, up key, or down key, you move up, down, left, or right. And these are just the degrees. Um, so up, down, uh, left, right, up, down. There's all sorts of different ways you can create character controls. This is just a very simple way that you can do it if you want to, um, but feel free to implement your own method here if you prefer. So next, I'm going to have a look at our body of our um, snake. These are the body segments that are going to come after our snake. And I'm going to create a create event in here. So in our create event, we're going to add this this line of code or these lines of code. So we're going to declare how fast our um, the body is going to move. Each body part is going to move. And we're going to declare uh, sort of which body part is this particular body part going to be following. Because the, fir the first body part is going to be following the head. The second one is going to be following the, the, um, the first body part. The third one is going to be following the second and so on. So Right now, we don't know what it's going to be following, so I'm just going to say we don't know and put no one in here. Um, and then the next line is saying, hey, we're going to add the ID of this body part that we're creating on the screen into the list that we created before. So each time a body part's created, we add the ID of that body part into our list. So now we end up with a big list of all the different body parts uh, that we can, we can work with. Now we need to also create a step event. And in our step event, we're gonna create a few things. And I'm gonna just add these things uh, line by line, I think, in this case. So, so here, uh, what are we doing? So we're saying 
uh, we're declaring a local variable, which is just a variable that we can use in this segment of code and nowhere else. And we do that using the var command. So that's just saying, hey, make this variable, make sure we can only use the variable in this section. We can't go using it up here or somewhere else in our code. We can only use it here. That's, that's that there. And, and in that local variable, we're going to be searching our, li our list for ourselves. We're going to be saying, hey, have a look in that list that the head created earlier, this one, have a look through there and see if you can find ourselves in that list. And if you can, can you please return to us uh, what number of that list are we on? Are we the first in the list? Are we the second in the list? Are we the third in the list? That's what the find index does it finds some piece of information in this case the ID and then it says what number of that list are we are we zero one two three or four so then listed becomes zero one two three or four or five or whatever number that that particular body segment is okay so next we're going to add a if statement so this if statement is basically saying if this check is run and uh, nothing is there, then, um, oh, sorry, let me rephrase that. This is the not symbol. So uh, if this is not true, then continue. Now, if this check is run and it doesn't find any body part at all, then the default response that this command returns is negative one. So what we're saying is that if, if it's not negative one, if you don't come back with a negative response, then you can actually continue and, and run the following code. So here, we're gonna just, oh, let's move this over so you can see what's going on. So we've got, if it's zero, then we know that that's gonna be the head of the player because it's the first segment. So if it's zero, then it's going to be that the, the object follow variable, which we declared before, is no longer no one, but we know it's going to be the head. So let's follow the head if it's the first segment. Otherwise, if it's not the head, then we're going to need to find the very last uh, position of our snake and uh, follow that. So, so this is saying find in our list the last position of the snake. And that and that um, negative one there is important because otherwise it'll it'll search for itself and that could get a bit uh, well that'll break our code. So we don't we don't want that. So what we want is the last position of this of the snake to follow before itself. Um, and so just so you can get a bit of a visualization of what I'm talking about here. Uh, so uh, it means that, say it was this segment, oops, say it was this segment here, um, we, we don't want to be searching and actually finding that segment. We want to be finding this segment so that this can follow that. Um, that's why we put negative one in. Uh, okay, so now the next section of code is saying, okay, so supposing one of these two things is true, right, and we haven't got a negative one, we actually have found either that the the listed item is either the player or it's the um, or it's the object or it's 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 one of the body segments. Then then we can continue to to run this code. Um, so that's what this is checking. And then uh, this is saying right. Well, um, how far away? Uh, uh, the x and y coordinates of this particular body segment from the uh, from the next object it wants to follow. Okay, and then it's saying, okay, well, if it's 64 units away, then um, you can you can move towards it. But if it's any closer than 64 units away, then stop moving towards it. And the reason we do that is because, as it stands, if if I were to run the game, then everything will be spaced away from each other properly. Our snake will be spaced away from each other properly. But if I if I set that to zero, then our snake will clump up and it will become a bit of a mess. So 
so the bigger this number is, the more spaced out our snake is, basically. So that could be helpful for later on there. Now, uh, we're going to need to introduce a uh, an apple into our scene. So we need the spawner to produce our apples. So we'll go to our spawner now, and we'll go to add event, and we'll go to step event. And in our step event, we want to create uh, an apple. And what we're saying is that if there is no apple in the scene, then we create an apple, and that apple is going to exist um, within the range of our screen. And I've just ran this I random command to say, you know, between zero and the room's width and zero and the room's height, that's where we're going to place our apple. So somewhere in the coordinates of our screen, um, that's where we're going to put our apple there. Now, I also want to have a collision command occur whenever the, the snake actually hits an apple. So we'll go to collision, objects, apple. And here, just bear with me a tick. We're going to add these lines of code here. So what this is basically saying is look in our list and find the last ID, find the tail of our snake. Um, and tell us what that particular um, ID is. And then where that particular body segment is, the tail of the snake, add our next segment. So whenever the apple hits, so whenever the head hits, hits the apple, then um, it creates another body segment at the end of, of the snake. Because um, if, if we didn't do this and we just created it, say, at the X and Y of the head, then it would look a bit weird because the next body segment would come out of the head of the snake instead of the tail of the snake. So that's just helpful to do uh, for that. And uh, the last thing we could probably do here is just run another collision event in the apple, which just basically says instance destroy. Whenever it hits the head, the apple disappears. Now, if I've done everything correctly, I need to check. Now, I haven't added anything into the room yet, so let's add these things. So we'll go Object, uh, Player. I'm going to add a couple of body segments in our, our game, and then we're just going to add our spawner into the game. And now we're going to run our game here. And we can see that our snake is moving around properly. And uh, each time we eat a apple, we're getting an extra segment on our snake there. So that's basically it. Um, there's all kinds of stuff you could do with this code. You could use it to um, make a tentacle for, for a game, or you could use it to uh, make a group of soldiers follow around a main character. Um, it's a really cool effect to introduce into your games, I think. So hopefully that helps you out. Well, thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope it's been of use to you. If it has, please uh, hit the like button and subscribe. And um, I hope to hear from you uh, in the comments section below if you, if you have any questions or anything, um, any comments on how I can improve my tutorials, please feel free to leave a comment. Thanks very much for watching and have a great day. See ya.